Welcome to this first presentation of the Copernicus Land Monitoring Service. This first presentation will focus on giving you some details on the product portfolio and the access details, how to get access to these data. And let's go right into it. The presentation is structured as follows. It will first provide information about the three basic components of the Copernicus Land Monitoring Service, that is the global, the continental, or also called pan-European component, and the local component, which all have their specific characteristics, spatial resolutions and purposes. And um, the presentation will also give details, at least some details, on the product specifications and characteristics and how to get access to these data in terms of both viewing services, download services, and also web mapping services, which you can use in your geographic information systems. It also will show you how to get access to additional information uh, on top of the data, which is like publications, technical libraries, um, documentation, accuracy, documentation, and so on. It will also show you how to make practical access to these data from the portals, how to register and be obtained uh, and obtain the access to these data, and how to also use um, these data in, in other environments. So let's start with the global component, which, as the name suggests, is a pan-European um, product, set of products, basically, which addresses a set of biogeophysical parameters, which do, well, monitor the status and the evolution of the Earth's surface under various aspects. So this is basically addressing vegetation characteristics, water aspects, and also energy flux aspects. All this typically at a medium to low spatial resolution. So we're talking about one kilometer pixel resolution down to 100 meter, but not further down. But in turn, it has a very high temporal resolution. So this is typically every 10 days, uh, there's a product made available to the public. Um, the global component is coordinated by the European Commission's Joint Research Center and the range of products that are provided in there is quite manifold. So the vegetation related indices and products comprise burnt area mapping, comprise dry matter productivity, um, the fraction of absorbed phot photosynthetically active radiation called FAPAR, which is basically that fraction of the sun's light that can be and is used by the plants for the phot photosynthesis. It comprises the fraction of green vegetation cover, uh, several uh, vegetation indices like the leaf area index, which is a measure of the density of green plants. Uh, also the normalized difference vegetation index, a very commonly and easy to calculate index, but also vegetation condition indices and productivity indices. In terms of energy, there are products like land surface temperature, surface albedo, and top of canopy reflectances. In terms of water, there's currently soil water index and water bodies. This list of products is foreseen to be extended in the coming years. So by 2019, we expect to have more products on the energy aspects, water aspects, and also on cryosphere aspects. So that's snow and ice um, covered areas of the Earth's surface. The pan-European, or also called continental component, comprises basically an area that is the EU28 member states plus cooperating countries of the European Environment Agency, so that's most of Western, Central and Eastern Europe, plus uh, Turkey. You'll see a picture later. And this comprises also a range of products, starting from the Korean land cover, which has the longest time series um, since 1990. Uh, which is a product with a 25 hectare minimum mapping unit, which is a rather coarse product, but has the advantage of being a uniform over all of that European area with 44 land cover and land use classes all over that area with a long time series. There is since 2012, in addition to that, there's the so-called high resolution layers, which is a 20 meter pixel resolution um, products of um, various land cover and land use characteristics in terms of impervious areas, forest areas, grassland areas, water and wetness areas, and details will be shown later. 
In addition to these thematic products, there is also image mosaics, which can be used in complement to these thematic products and also for visualization purposes. So we have different also spatial resolutions here. We have very high resolution mosaics with one and a half to two and a half meter resolution and high resolution mosaics with typically 20 meter resolution. Also dating back to 2000 and being updated in regular intervals. In addition, there's reference data which can be used for all kinds of applications on top of these um, image and thematic products. These comprise typically the EU digital elevation model, which is a product that comprises height information for all of the European area and connected to that the EU hydro data set, which is a data set of the European hydrographic network. So that is river flows, streams, how they are connected, what their hierarchical connections are and so on. All these products have various purposes, but what they have in common is that they generally allow to monitor the state and also the changes of the Earth's surface over time, which is important for very many uh, environmental and policy applications. The update cycle is between three and six years, and the spatial resolution, as I said, ranges between 20 meter pixel resolution and several hectares minimum mapping unit. That pan-European component is coordinated by the European Environment Agency in Copenhagen. And likewise, the local component, which has the highest spatial resolution, is also coordinated by the European Environment Agency. The focus of that local component is slightly different. It doesn't map whole Europe in a spatially explicit manner, but it focuses on so-called hotspots in two kinds of aspects, both hotspots of human activity, so that can be where typically human settlements and human building activities take place. So that's, for example, the Urban Atlas data set, which has been derived since 26 in regular intervals. The latest update is 2012. This maps basically the land use and land cover in all European agglomerations, which have more than 50,000 inhabitants. There's other hotspots which are more related to ecology and biodiversity first being the data set of European riparian zones, which provides a very detailed, very high level um, with many different classes, a land cover and land use data set of the buffer zones and lowland areas along the major and medium sized European river courses. Plus we have a monitoring product for Natura 2000 sites, which is also ecologically very sensitive areas protected under the fauna and flora habitats directives of the European Commission. Um, this provides a selection of, of um, these areas which is also expected to be extended further in the future for also providing various monitoring possibilities. All these products have in common that they are basically providing vector data of land use and land cover with typically a minimum mapping unit of half a hectare, so rather detailed. Um, they have nomenclatures which vary in their depth, but they provide up to 80 different thematic classes, which is quite a lot, at a very high spatial resolution. So as I said, between an, one and a half and two and a half meter at a regular update cycle of typically six years. So all these products are made available by the European Environment Agency via the Copernicus Land Monitoring Service webpage, which is quoted here. It has different categories where you can access these data and have both access via viewing services, download services and web map services. Let's try and get into that. So we've prepared a short overview where we go through the different categories of the portal which I'd like to show you. So starting from the Copernicus website, um, you can click on land monitoring, which provides you first some text information about the general purpose and the structure of the land monitoring service. And then you can further click to the portal, which you see here, which is structured along the different categories, the global, the continental and local component, plus additional some in situ reference data. Um, so when we start with the global component, this, if you click on products, that provides you exactly the list of different products shown before. And we 
going to have a look at some selected products. So first we have a viewing service here. You can select, for example, the leaf area index and you see this is shown on a global scale. The green areas showing high levels of leaf area index, brown areas of low level. And you can then select certain time periods. So you have a menu where you can do the selection. And then you can just click through from day to day or from month to month and you see the changes over time. So this is very useful for applications related to food security, to um, global um, climate change mitigation issues and so on. So further examples, if you look at vegetation state, are shown here. Important, all these data are free of charge, but you need to register before you can download the data, which is just a formality, but which gives some useful information also to the producers on how and by whom these data are being used. Now going into the pan-European component, this also has a range of different categories, starting with the image mosaics here. So this, for example, is the very high resolution image data. Going into that, we see that it's, it's rather performant. Um, you can click somewhere in there, zoom in. So for example, here to England, specifically to London. And you can, could go further in and, and you would see that it's very much detail. So it's similar to Google Earth, but it's a consistent data set at a certain time step with a given specification, given resolution and in a consistent manner. So next is the access to the web mapping service. You see here underlined in red the URL that you need to integrate into your GIS software and then you can use these data directly in your software environment. Next product is the well-established Korean land cover data set. You see there's the time series of these data. Now let's take the latest version of 2012. Again going to London. So you see this is um, a product with up to 44 different classes uniformly produced by member states and compiled for whole of Europe. And you can select here different products for download. So this is the download button. And again here you need to register. It's well, basically a formality which helps, however, the producers and the European Environment Agency keep track of which kinds of users are using the data, which category of, of entity you come from, which um, profession probably uh, you have and so on. But it's in, in, a, in a generalized manner, of course. The next uh, level of products is the so-called high-resolution layers. Here, looking at the time series of imperviousness layer, which has a history since 26. There's also the forest layer, which is a quite established product, um, which has two different kinds of main products. Tree cover density, which gives the degree of tree percentage per pixel and forest type. And there's also the other products, grassland, wetland and water bodies. Further, data are the European reference data, as mentioned before. This is the European DEM and the European Hydro data set. When clicking to the digital elevation model, you see there's different versions. The latest version is the version 1.1. That can be accessed and downloaded also in tiles. So you don't need to download the whole data set, but you can select parts of that. The local component comprises exactly the three data sets I mentioned before the Evan Atlas, the Riparian Zones product and the Natura 2000. The Urban Atlas has a history since 26, now latest version is 2012. Has been progressing from settlements with 100,000 100, inhabitants to now 50,000. The Riparian Zones comprise more than 550,000 square kilometers for whole of Europe and the Natura 2000 areas currently comprise a cumulative area of about 160,000, which is also um, 
scheduled to be extended. Um, operations are ongoing for that. On the right side, you see the bar which gives you the possibility to select further data sets or basically documentation. So if you click there, you see there's a whole library of technical documentation, specifications document, validation results, all the um, technical details you need for using the data. And all these are freely available and can be downloaded. So thanks for your attention. Hope you've enjoyed that first overview. Thank you. Yeah.